The melody that you've just heard is the third in my series of original Travis Picking melodies. The first was in the key of F, the second was in the key of G, and this one is in the key of C. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play our Travis Picking melody, and we'll walk through the tablature step by step. This arrangement is for low G tuning, and if you'd like to download the tabs, you can do so from my Patreon page. You'll find the link down below in the video description. Now let's get started with our tutorial. Let's take a look at our Travis picking pattern played slowly on a C chord. I'm starting by picking strings 4 and 1 together with my thumb and middle finger. Then I'm picking string 3 with my thumb, string 2 with my index finger, back to string 4 with my thumb, down to string 1 with my middle finger, and I'm finishing on string 3 with my thumb. The rhythm of this pattern is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Bringing this pattern up to the tempo of this melody looks like this. Now taking a look at the tablature, we're going to play our Travis picking pattern twice in each measure. In the first measure, we're starting on a D minor 7 chord. Here I have my index finger on the first fret of the second string, my middle and ring fingers on the second fret of strings 3 and 4, and my pinky on the third fret of the first string. We'll play our Travis picking pattern twice on this chord. In measure 2, we're moving to a G7 chord. I've kept my index finger where it was from our D minor 7 chord, and I've moved my middle and ring fingers to the second fret of strings 1 and 3. We'll play our Travis picking pattern one time on our G7 chord, and then the second time we play this pattern on G7, we're starting with a different melody note. So we'll place our pinky down on the third fret of the first string. After we pick the first string on the third fret, we'll lift up our pinky so that the second time we pick the first string will be on the second fret. Now here's how it looks to put both patterns together at a slow tempo in measure two on our G7 chord. Three, we're moving to a C chord. For our first pattern in measure 3, the first time we pick the first string, we're going to slide our ring finger from the 3rd fret up to the 5th fret. Then we'll stay on the 5th fret for the remainder of this measure. Here's how this looks. we're starting with another slide from the 5th fret up to the 7th fret. Here's what our first pattern looks like. For the second pattern, we're going to start back on the 5th fret for the first time that we play our first string, and then we'll slide our ring finger down to the 3rd fret for the second time that we play the first string. Here's how this looks. Now if we put everything together in measure 4. In measure 5, we're moving to a D minor chord. This is similar to the D minor 7 that we played in measure 1, except we don't have our pinky on the first string. We'll play our Travis picking pattern once on D minor. And then for the second pattern on D minor, we're going to reach our pinky out to the 5th fret of the 1st string, and then move it down 
to the third fret of the first string. So the first time we play the first string will be on our fifth fret, and the second time will be on our third fret. Here's how it looks to play measure five at a slow tempo. Reaching your pinky out to the fifth fret is quite a stretch, and the tip that I have for you here is to try to have as much curve to your wrist as possible. If your wrist is more flat, it's going to be harder to stretch, but if your wrist is more forward with a nice curve to it, it will be easier to reach your pinky out to that fifth fret. Measure six is identical to measure two on our G7 chord. In measure seven, we're moving to a C5 chord. I have my middle and ring fingers on the third fret of strings one and two. We'll play our Travis picking pattern once on this chord, and then we're going to a C chord. So we're lifting up our middle finger. We only have our ring finger down, and we're going to do the same slide up to the fifth fret that we did in measure three. Measure eight is the same as measure seven, so we'll go back to our C5 chord. Once we get to the end of measure eight, we can go back to measure one and repeat measures one through eight as many times as we would like. When we get to the end of the melody on measure nine, we'll finish with a C5 chord. If you enjoyed learning this melody, please give this video a like and thank you for subscribing. Have fun practicing and thank you for watching.